Hi, my name's Gary. I'm 58. I live in the UK and I have Dish. Um, I wanted to put some videos up on YouTube, um, basically because I've had Dish for a number of years. Um, and when I first started researching it, I couldn't find any information on it whatsoever. And probably like you, uh, I felt um, a bit sort of isolated in a way because I thought, well, you know, nobody seems to know about this. Uh, I can't relate to anybody. Um, I did fortunately find a, a group on Facebook. Um, you can look it up. It's um, the Dish Forum on there. Um, but what I wanted to do was to share with you what I do, uh, the strategies that I use to try and deal with Dish. Um, and basically, it's the symptoms of Dish that you're dealing with. You you can't stop Dish. It's a, it's a form of arthritis, and you'll see that majority of arthritic conditions cannot be cured so it's a case of having to deal with what you've got uh, and and new strategies to try and cope with it um, so the first thing that people want to know is is what is dish and um, it's a it's an acronym for a rather long-winded uh, wording which is diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis and basically in English what that means is, is diffuse means it's all over your body it can be all over your body idiopathic means they have no idea what causes it skeletal means it affects the skeleton and hyperostosis means it's an over um, build up of bone and calcium uh, it's also known as Forrester's disease and also an uh, ankle senile ankylosing hyperostosis so uh, what i want to do today in this first little video uh, and you can probably tell i'm a bit nervous because i don't do this on a regular basis um so you know bear with me if i do seem a bit um, nervous about it um but i want to explain what dish is um so i'm not going to use whizzy sliding you know diagrams from the internet uh, i'm not that clever so i'm just going to use some drawings and uh, hopefully you'll get the message um so dish is basically a, a problem with the enthesis um now i'm wondering what the enthesis is uh, if you look at this picture here this is a, a basic picture of a knee so you've got the top and lower parts of the bone um, you've got the joint space in between, and to support this knee, you have the two. You have muscles either side, and the muscles are then go into a tendon, which is stronger than the actual muscle, um, and then it joins into the bone. Um, but and this part here is called the enthesis, where it's the actual anchor. What happens with dish is that uh, in that. Um, connection between the tendon to the bone, the enthesis, there's this um, build-up of calcium. Um, I think what happens is, is that the, the tendons, as you get older, they start to get uh, harder and um, less flexible and the body starts to recognise this as a problem and because the joint then maybe starts to become unstable the body's reaction is, is to put, start putting calcium in there to try and stabilize it and what happens with people with dish is this mechanism just goes into overdrive um, so dish can vary quite a lot you you know you, you can have it quite mildly uh, and it doesn't really affect you into your older age and some people unfortunately um, it starts quite early and quite aggressive and it does cause problems um, so the first thing is, is um, how do you get diagnosed with DISH? Um, you've probably been experiencing pain maybe throughout your life, in your back, in your hips. Um, everybody gets pains, we all know that. Um, but this is quite a lot, quite a, quite a few days uh, a week and it starts to get worse and then you're starting to look for answers. So you'll, you'll see your GP, your GP uh, may get some um, bloods done and things like that but mo more often than not they refer you to a rheumatologist um, the rheumatologist um, will ask you a lot of questions about your symptoms um, he'll take some measurements on your back to see how flexible you are um, and he'll look at your blood blood results and then he'll probably order a plain x-ray um, of your spine 
And plain x-rays are great for um, showing up any problems with dish because plain x-rays show up uh, calcium and bone very well. So um, once, the, once the plain x-rays come back, um, they'll be looking in the thoracic area of your spine, which is the upper section. And what you can see with DISH is you can start to see this buildup of calcium along the side of the spine. And on the inside of your spine, you've got the uh, anterior ligament, long, anterior longitudinal ligament, which is a very long ligament that sits on the inside of your spine. And as I said earlier, this ligament angers itself into the vertebrae on your body and then this is where the build-up of um, calcium starts to take place. So I've got another picture. I know you're very excited to see it. Um, here we have a picture of a spine. Um, so you can see the vertebral bodies here. And you can see the disc spaces between each one. And on the front of the spine, so this is on the inside of your body, so the anterior uh, aspect, you can see this build up of white all the way along the front of the spine. And it's starting to go over these disc spaces. Those disc spaces in your back are where there's a spongy um, disc that allows the, the spine to bend. Um, allows you to have some movement and, and what happens with dish is that once that calcium starts to build across that gap it then starts to stiffen your spine and then that's where you start to feel uh, the pain and the less movement in your body um, and that process can happen in any joint so it could happen in your knees it can happen in your elbows it can happen in your feet your neck anywhere basically where there's a joint and there's a ligament that's attached so uh, you start to get this build up of calcium and then that's what starts to cause all the pain in the body. Um, so the rheumatologist, if he can see uh, at least three of those vertebrae in your thoracic spine that has the continuation of the calcium, he will give you a diagnosis of DISH. Um, at that point you're thinking well okay now I've got a diagnosis all I need is the cure well unfortunately with as I said earlier with all arthritic conditions there is no cure so what it's about is being able to go forward from that point on get it into your mindset what it is uh, and then start looking at strategies and ways of dealing with it um, I took two, it took me two years before I come to terms with it because yeah it's a, it's a slap in the chops to be told that you've got the dish it's going to affect your life it's going to stop you doing things you're not going to be running marathons you're not going to be doing gymnastics um, so it will change your life and uh, it's a progressive disease so over time uh, the pain will start to get a little bit worse and you'll have to up everything that you do to try and keep on top of it so the, the rheumatologist will say to you, uh, keep moving, uh, keep exercising, try and keep your mobility, take some NSAIDs, which is our non-steroid anti-inflammatory uh, drugs. Um, I'll talk about those in a separate video because it's quite a big subject area, to be honest. Um, so he'll probably diagnose those. He'll also say, he'll also prescribe. Sorry, he'll prescribe those. Uh, he'll also say that um, you know painkillers such as normal paracetamol and uh, codeine stuff like that to help with the pain. Um, and then he'll send you on your way, um, and that's it basically. So it's then over to you to to try and deal with it. And that's that's the whole purpose of these videos that I'm doing um, because I want to try and impart what I've done uh, to you guys and hopefully it will help some of you um, I'm not saying it's going to help everybody everybody's different everybody has some everybody's in a different part of the journey with dish so it might be early in in, in the progress in which case a lot of what I'm going to tell you in in the next few videos will help if you're right down the end of the line where you know you've got quite a lot of fused um, joints and stuff like that it's going to be a lot more difficult to try and deal with the symptoms and you probably already know that anyway so you know 
what I'm going to tell everybody is it's going to be variable on how useful it is to you. One of the things to note about DISH is that it tends to um, be a comorbidity. So there are other things that generally are going on. Um, first thing is high blood pressure. Uh, I've got high blood pressure. Uh, I don't, I'm not your typical sort of high blood pressure person, but I think it's more hereditary than anything. So people with DISH tend to have high blood pressure. Um, people tend to have diabetes. Um, people um, are maybe obese, uh, overweight, uh, and maybe some other metabolic um, problems. And um, one of the other things that's um, been found is that people that have been treated when they were young for acne, um, they have been treated with retinoids, and retinoids tend to increase your chances of getting dish as well. So there's an interesting connection there. So in this, this, this first short video, I'm hoping that um, I've explained what DISH is. Um, I, I want to do some further videos um, in the future. I want to um, talk about mainstream treatment, so the drugs that they use to help you with the pain and the inflammation that's associated with DISH. Um, on inflammation, let me just say that um, DISH is not an inflammatory condition. Um, a lot of arthritis, itis means inflammation, so a lot of um, problems with uh, arthritis are inflammatory. Uh, in fact, there's a, there is a um, disease called ankylosing spondylitis, which is very similar to DISH. And... Um, one of the things rheumatologists would want to do is rule that out. And um, the first thing they will do is look at your sacroiliatic joint, which is a very fine joint inside the pelvis. And if that has fused, um, there's a good possibility that you've got ankylosing spondylitis. And what happens is if the disc spaces fuse in the spine and you get what's called a bamboo spine. <clears throat> so um, that's the first thing they want to rule out. But if you haven't got that fusing in the uh, sacroiliatic joint uh, and you've got this buildup of um, calcium which can, can be seen on the on the plain x-ray then there's a fair chance he will say that you've got dish um, so yeah the other the the other um, videos that I want to, to do are um, alternative um, therapies and alternative supplements and things like that. Again, that's another big subject. It's very variable. Some people find it's, you know, there's things that work for them. <clears throat> there's some things that don't work for others. Um, I want to go through what my routine is, what my daily routine is to try and keep on top of the symptoms. Um, I've, I was diagnosed with DISH um what three or four years ago so i've learned an awful lot about what works for me and what doesn't and um, i want to impart that information to you so you guys can see uh, well try it and see whether it works for you um i also want to take you on a little journey to my physiotherapist and um, have a chat with her and um she's quite funny actually i think you'll like her um and see you know what what she does for me in terms of the physiotherapy so, okay, so that's basically what I want to do. I want to, I've explained to you what DISH is. Um, I've explained to you there isn't a magic bullet, um, but what I want to do is impart what strategies that I'm using. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to help you guys. There isn't much information on the internet, so everything, anything that you can get is going to hopefully be helpful. Um, so... I'm hoping that my first video has been useful to you. I, I hope I haven't bored you to tears. Um, so look forward. I hope you look forward to the, the next video, uh, which is going to be, I'm going to talk about mainstream treatment and the drugs that uh, the mainstream guys um, recommend you use, uh, what the advantages are, what the disadvantages are, what I found works and what I found doesn't work. Um, and again, it, you know, different things work for different people. So that's it really, uh, first, first clip over and done, hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch up with you soon, thank you.